Hi, it's Friday afternoon in time to look back at what happened at Queen's Park and in Ontario politics this past week. The government of Ontario announced its back to school plans. There were plans to protect health, but not to recover lost learning. Secondly, for frontline education and health workers, there was political controversy over the idea of mandatory vaccinations. Keep watching to find out more or join me next week as I look back at what happened at Queen's Park. So on Tuesday, the government of Ontario released its back to school plans. Basically, it's back to school with normal activities, extracurricular activities, but masks, self-screening and distancing will be needed. Uh, high schools will have some cohorting, so high school students will only be able to take two courses in a given day, but they will also be able to take two other courses every second week, so a total of four courses at the same time. There has been money spent on ventilation and more money was made available, so HVAC systems in buildings will, be, uh, will have been or will be upgraded, for example, better filters. Uh, and if that is not possible, then individual HEPA filter units, like the kind you find in dentist's office, will be uh, available in classrooms. And the province has already purchased a large number of them. Remote learning will be available to those who want it. So I have two concerns. One is that no teacher should have to run in-person classrooms and online classrooms at the same time. It's just too hard for for one person and learning will suffer. The second thing is that there should have been more hiring for in-class uh, assistance and mental health supports. All the teachers and other experts that I've talked to are anticipating that there will be many students who have fallen behind and are going to need a lot of extra help uh, to catch up. And that's really important for their future and actually for society as a whole because this is affecting uh, the whole province and actually many places around the world. So we know there's going to be a need and I was disappointed that that funding for that uh, wasn't announced and that the hiring hadn't already started. Uh, on the issue of frontline health and education workers uh, having mandatory vaccinations, there was some political controversy. On Wednesday evening, CBC's Power and Politics uh, show had two Ontario opposition leaders uh, interviewed. Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca put forward his position that frontline health and education workers should have a mandatory uh, vaccination uh, in order to protect vulnerable students, their families at home, teachers, staff, healthcare staff, and patients. Uh, leader of the off official opposition, Andrea Horvath, uh, accused Stephen Del Duca of taking charter rights uh, too lightly and was against mandatory vaccinations uh, and proposed a daily rapid test instead. There was intense criticism uh, from all around, including from her own NDP, NPPs and MPs. Uh, NDP leader Andrea Horvath had to uh, backtrack to reverse her position the next day on Thursday afternoon saying, quote, I was wrong. Now credit to Andrea Horvath for actually saying that. I think that's actually good for politics that she uh, did that. But it's also good now because it will be easier uh, with that uh, change in position to hold Doug Ford to account. Doug Ford is the one with the power, the power to do things to, to protect us, to protect our economy. And with the opposition uh, parties now aligned, it will be much easier to hold uh, Premier Doug Ford to account uh, to account for people getting sick or things having to close if, if the fourth wave of COVID does uh, reach Ontario. If you like these videos, please follow me on social media. Tell me what you think in the comments below and please join me next week as I look back at what happened at Queen's Park.